This is Cone Point looking to the Warden's Hut and the Ray Creek and scanning round the bridge which takes us across to the main part of Cone Point. The Warden's Hut has an observation platform on the top and I'm about to go up there. This is a view from the top of the Cone Point Hut. We're looking east and the creek is called Ray Creek and we're scanning round so we now see the sea in front of us. See a light area of sort of low vegetation is salt marsh grass. Sort of rougher looking slightly darker areas are mainly a shrub called shrubby sea blight. There's a creek and then there's another ridge before you actually get to the sea. Scanning round now you can see the high piece that's actually represents the end of an embankment which had been eroded by tide in previous times. This is known as a jetty bank and it goes up to a jetty where we will go next. This is the jetty ridge. You can just see the jetty towards the end and there is a hide known as a jetty hide. You can see that this ridge is quite high compared with all of the surrounding ground. Of course it's man-made it was put. It was built up to that level to make sure that the tide never did inundate it. it used to carry a little railway line. Um, the railway line was used for the quarrying operation. Sand and gravel was taken off of the beach, and uh, and it was transported along to a jetty. Scanning round, you can see that this is sat on an area of salt marsh. You can see the signs of a little creek there. Scanning round, you can see the remains of one of the hoppers or one of the trucks which was used on this little railway. So there's signs of what you might call industrial archaeology. And you can still find the railway lines themselves in part of the ridge here. From the end of the jetty ridge, you can see the creek. This is Ray Creek still. It's opened up. Start, you can see the jetty to the left. This is what remains of the jetty. This was used to load up barges. Much of the material went to East London uh, for building works. Having moved over onto the salt marsh, you can see some um, rather nice little pools which are typical of salt marsh. You can see the jetty behind and the jetty hide. Looking down on the ground, uh, in August, there's sea lavender, much of which actually has finished its best flowering, but some of it is still flowering nicely. You also get little patches of yellow flowers called, called sea aster as well. This is the outer ridge at Cone Point. So we get this rather tall grass, marron grass. You can still see the bushes, the suede bushes to the right. Looking down on the ground level, there's this uh, plant with greyish looking leaves. This is sea holly. It has very pale blue flowers which give out a lot of nectar and attract a lot of bees and butterflies in the dry month of July. Particularly special plant. Looking at the beach now, you can see the top ridge with rather sparse vegetation. You can see two tide lines where fairly small tides have been reaching in the last sort of um, days. And scanning across, you're looking over the sea, it's Mersey Island. Just see a small patch of shallow water a few hundred metres off the shore. So this area at low tide forms what are probably the best rock pool or um, pools similar to rock pools in the whole of Essex. Water here clears. These pools are full of very interesting intertidal life, including, in fact, native oysters. 